Anyway, um, I've chosen to speak this evening about, as Pamela Rosenberg says, a very difficult and timely uh, question. Uh, it sits, a question that sits like an evil uh, visage on the front pages of all of our newspapers and has done so at least since, 19, since 2008. The question, can the economy be governed? Now, I'm aware that raising this question before an audience such as yourselves is likely to produce two different answers. The Germans here will say, yes, of course it can be, and it must be. The Americans are more likely to say, no, it can't be, and it shouldn't be. Well, perhaps not these Americans. Not the ones who are friends and fellows of the American Academy, uh, the ones who are decried by our media as liberals and worse. And by the way, just a point of translation, in America, liberal means what you would call conservative of some sort. Uh, so just keep that in mind. <clears throat> in the fact that the American and German answers are likely to be different, my tale this evening is told. Both have been powerful and strong economies for over a century. In the post-war period, West Germany and the United States led the world in production and innovation and we were partners in the alliance that pushed back Soviet communism. Germany was not only the site of the Cold War border, as Astrid Eckert reminded us a couple of weeks ago, it was the great display window of Western society and political ideas. Political equality and freedom, economic liberty, constitutional government, and human dignity. For all our shared values in the area of high politics. In the 1980s, we began to diverge on the matter of economic governance. First in Britain when Margaret Thatcher became Prime Minister, then in America with the election of Ronald Reagan. The consensus that built America's post-war prosperity started to fragment until today there's a consensus only about what a dreadful mess it has all become. Against that Anglo-American backdrop, Germany's social market economy offers an appealing alternative. Our divergence can be understood in many ways, but tonight I want to explain it in terms of our respective commitments to a way of life in common. By this I mean to evoke the constitutional, not as a document, but as the integration of difference into a whole. The success of modern democracies depends in great measure on reducing difference through economic equality. I'll start by setting out the political thought which made the German and American constitutions different. I'll then explain why our present constitution has made crises such as the financial meltdown of 2008 inevitable. And by the way, I want to just as an aside call your attention to the fact that economists, for all their scientific language, seem to rely on naturalistic metaphors and analogies in order to express the severity of what they're saying. Finally, I'll conclude with a few thoughts on the way forward in economic governance. The political salience of disaffection with American capitalism is obvious. In the midterm elections last fall, voters turned out the governing party in droves. A populist movement of the disaffected called itself the Tea Party and turned the protest vote into significant legislative power as we see at this moment. Only a few weeks ago, America seemed on the verge of defaulting on its debt, of which there is a lot, because of radical opposition to what that movement, and increasingly the Republican Party, calls, quote, big government. <clears throat> they claim, frame the question as either or, either liberty or the state. Well before the Tea Party burst onto the scene, back when the tax on tea was a burning issue, liberty in American political discourse meant individual liberty. It's there in the Declaration of Independence. It's there in the Constitution, where Quote, the blessings of liberty is the chief reason for the more perfect union of the 13 states. It is the primary deity amongst the gods of the American pantheon. 
Its statue in New York welcomes million, millions to our shores. And a bronze of freedom stands atop the American building in the Capitol, the Capitol building in Washington. For all its presence, its self-evident truth, liberty is a difficult concept. It's been understood in Isaiah Berlin's famous dichotomy in two quite different ways. As positive liberty, the liberty to do and be, and as negative liberty, the liberty from interference. <laughs> 